Welcome everyone to Unscripted Coding. Now, a few days ago, OpenAI released the real-time API as a public beta. Now, for developers, this is huge news because real-time API is going to allow developers like me and you um, be able to build something akin to the voice mode, the advanced voice mode from OpenAI. Uh, that is to say we can have real-time conversations with an AI, we can interrupt them, they can change their voice so that's faster or slower, higher pitch or lower pitch, all in a very natural kind of setting. Now if you think back, um, obviously before this announcement, uh, the way I would build an app in which I can talk to an AI and get a voice response is to go through uh, speech to text and text to speech. And what that means is I would uh, talk to the app. I'd have the app uh, right here. I'd talk to it. Uh, it would take that audio clip, change it into plain text, enter the plain text through OpenAI, get a text response, and then take that text response and turn it into audio. So there's a bunch of steps. Now, barring being you know, a very large tech company, this is probably what most people do. And the problem with that is because there are so many steps that there is some delay. It's gotten a lot better, but I might say, hello, ChatGPT, and it would take a full second for them to respond back saying, good day. And that creates a bit of unnaturalness. Now, if you take a look at OpenAI's advanced voice mode or any of the major tech companies and their attempts at voice mode, uh, it's quite impressive because you are having a much more natural conversation where you can interrupt the AI. You can have them speak faster or slower. Uh, they may interrupt you. There is more of that human aspect of conversation because there is real-time uh, feedback that they can overlap, that they can uh, do different things that aren't um, hurdled by the amount of lag or the steps in between. Okay, so now that we're clear about what real-time API is, I wanted to give my initial first thoughts because this isn't a simple text API like we've done so far with OpenAI. It will become a little bit more involved in trying to make this all work. Um, it should be noted this is a public beta, so I did find the documentation not fully complete, at least my first glance. Um, and of course, there's a whole bunch of uh, marketing material. Uh, I should mention that the pricing is uh, uh, something like five to 10 times more expensive, natural, but uh, this will get quite pricey to run, especially at scale. But nevertheless, they're giving us incredible tools to use, and I'm pretty excited because I've been using the voice mode to practice my French and Japanese uh, through these conversations with an AI. Oh, and that's another major bonus that I found uh, in that these uh, advanced voice modes are able to recognize multiple languages on the fly. OpenAI seems to do a lot better than, say, Google Gemini, but you can uh, speak in one language and switch to another midway through, and they still kind of continue the conversation. Uh, if you were strictly doing this speech-to-text, text-to-speech thing, uh, that wouldn't work so well. Okay, so uh, let's go through the documentation here. Um, what you're going to find is that uh, the real-time API is a WebSocket. This means that it opens two-way communications, which uh, makes a lot of sense because it does need that real-time uh, aspect to it. Unlike the chat completion or what we've seen so far with ChatGPT where you send some text, they send it back, 
um, in kind of discrete steps, the real-time API opens up a WebSocket so that uh, we can talk and they can simultaneously respond and interact with each other. So WebSockets are quite common in, I guess, voice chat applications, streaming applications, those kind of things, but it does ramp up the complexity. You're going to need um, different ways to tackle this. Uh, so for example, uh, they suggest using uh, the WebSocket library in Node.js um, over here, and you'll see that they've built it out that way. Uh, I also, uh, my understanding, I don't use a lot of WebSockets in my development, but my understanding is WebSockets are already built into most web browsers. So you can kind of get away with it um, using plain JavaScript. We might play with this a little bit later on, but uh, again, makes it a bit more complicated because you're going to need a modern browser. You're going to need to be able to run web sockets. It's not going to be as easy as this text API we've been used to because with that API, you could basically use any uh, programming language and connect to OpenAI pretty easily, whereas WebSockets aren't available in everything. Now, it's definitely available for JavaScript, obviously, but it's also available for Python and a few of the major languages I care about. Um, anyways, uh, you'll see that you can uh, do this in different ways as well. You can send discrete text messages back and forth, similar to chat completion, but because you've opened up a WebSocket, uh, the connection is a little bit different. You can also send audio in kind of that discrete format. So I record my voice, send it over, get a response. But more realistically, the real benefit to all of this is going to be streaming audio in which you're just in a constant stream that is constantly being uploaded to OpenAI along the way. Uh, you can see there's all sorts of code required because you're going to need to decode the audio as it comes. You need to package it in some way and send it in a continuous stream to OpenAI. And you're going to need to then uh, listen for all of the responses as they come back. Um, oh, excellent. So you can see they have given us Python and Node.js as two different libraries, similar kind of issues. You're using PyDub to kind of um, uh, stream the audio across. Um, but, let me scroll all the way down. Uh, what you're going to do is you're going to listen for a whole bunch of events as they come through and I, I guess parse it into audio. I'm realizing it would be quite ambitious for us to try and build something right now after that long-winded explanation, but um, what is available is a uh, demonstration right in right on the playground. Uh, this was not available when I looked a little bit ago, so it must be relatively new. Um, oops. But of course, we're going to need to enable microphone access. Uh, I'll allow it this time. Um, you can pick voices. It's strange that there are only three because I think I saw that there should be six there should be six voices available, but maybe for the playground for now. Um... What's up? This hey there, I'm Shimmer. Okay, let's let's choose Shimmer. Um, you get a few different options here. Uh, how long you remain silent before it goes to the server's turn. Uh, it's very cool that you can uh, create functions. So. Uh, that tacks on to the chat completion. So uh, perhaps when you say, when you ask about certain things, um, real-time API can connect to the internet, can run a function, can connect to your site, 
can fetch data, all sorts of things. Um, and then you have, you know, your classic model temperature and max token. So how variable and how long the output is. Um, I'm just going to do a quick conversation here. Hello, ChatGPT. How are you doing? Hey there, I'm feeling great. Thanks for asking. How about you? How's your day going? It's going pretty well. What I'm doing is recording a YouTube video right now explaining what real-time API from OpenAI is. Do you want to take a second to explain what you can do? Absolutely. I'd love to help out with your video. OpenAI's real-time API allows okay. developers... let me stop you right there for a second. Uh, I have a pretty sophisticated audience. What they want to know is how hard is it to build something with the real-time API? Got it. For a sophisticated audience, you'll want to highlight that the real-time API is designed to be developer-friendly. While there is a learning curve... Sorry for interrupting again. But can you speak just a little bit faster and louder? Of course. So diving back in for experienced developers, the real-time API from OpenAI is quite approachable. There's a learning curve, particularly in mastering prompt. Okay, so we'll leave it at that. Oh, uh, let me turn this off. Um, We'll leave it at that. You can see that uh, I could interrupt. I could ask uh, ChatGPT to uh, speak faster and louder. Uh, this will be really, really, really useful. Um, that said, the barrier is it's going to be uh, a lot more work to try and build an application around it. Uh, whether you might need a server in the background or you might need to expose your API somehow, um, I'm still trying to work through, but it is definitely uh, harder to put a wrapper around this. You're going to need a little bit more uh, programming knowledge, programming know-how to build something useful with this. But similarly, um, you can change the system instructions and turn it into something useful for you. And so again, going back to my example, if I wanted to practice French here, uh, I might change the system instructions um, to you are a French tutor, uh, you will respond in French unless I am making a mistake. You can then explain the mistakes in English if necessary. Okay, and then we'll just start another quick session here because Bonjour, comment ça va, ChatGPT? Bonjour, je vais bien, merci. Et vous, comment allez-vous? Je suis bien, merci, mais pouvez-vous parler un peu en anglais? Bien sûr, I can switch to English if it's easier for you. How? Okay, so I'm stopping there, but kind of cool that it could switch languages. That's one of the really, really powerful things that um, that I found while using the advanced voice mode on the ChatGPT app. Uh, I, I think we're at that point where um, there's going to be a ton of new use cases that we have to think about. It took a long time for people to realize how, uh, how to use ChatGPT. In fact, I think there's still many use cases out there that we haven't explored but real-time api just gives it uh gives us all uh, a lot more to look forward to and a lot more to think about um in terms of how we can use this so um i hope that is helpful i think in probably the next week or next two weeks i might do another video in which we're going to try and build something hopefully without node.js hopefully something lighter and simpler something that we can build on the client side to get this ball running because um even their very simple demo uh is a bit heavy for me i i don't want to have the infrastructure requirements i like the one page web apps that uh, we've been used to so far. 
Okay, um, I'm going to wrap it up here. If you found this video helpful, please do subscribe or give me a thumbs up. But if you didn't, uh, leave me a comment. I'm always trying to improve. Uh, thanks for watching, and hopefully I will see you around next week. Bye.